guys. Welcome back to Southern Girl True Crime. It is Missing Person Monday, so I have five uh, cold cases to bring to you. And I believe all these cases, if I remember correctly, are from the early uh, 2000s. And I call it Mysterious Disappearances because there are some strange circumstances in most of these. So we will get started. Get my slides going. But before we get into our cold cases, I always feature, come on, there we go, a current, um, current missing person um, of the week or of the day. And this uh, featured missing person is Kaylee Ann Cotner. She is 31 years old. She was uh, last seen in Valonia, Arkansas on July 1st of this year. She, her current age would be 31 years old. Uh, she's five foot, 125 pound, white female with blonde or strawberry blonde hair and hazel eyes. So if you have any information regarding Kaylee or her disappearance, please contact the Heber Springs Police Department at 501-362-3661. And I will put a link, and this information came from the Morgan Nick Foundation Facebook page. So I will put a link to it in the description box. Um, and I implore you, please share it anywhere and everywhere you can to help get this information out to as many people as, pop as possible, as quickly as possible. Because that is the most important thing. Sorry, my cat just decided to jump across the table. All right, now we will get into our... Like I said, I'm calling it mysterious circumstances. Some of them, there's a couple of them that... I have a possible idea or theory about what happened. Maybe not so mysterious, but there are some, uh, well, to me, in my opinion, all um, missing persons cases are mysterious. But um, we will get into the first one is Jason Washington. So Jason went missing on October 15th, 2022. So just about a year ago from Columbia, Missouri. He is classified as endangered missing. He is a black male uh, who was 49 years old when he went missing. So he'd be 50 um, years old today, six foot, 130 to 100, 165 pounds. He was last seen wearing a gray long sleeve shirt, gray pants and red Nike Air Max shoes. And uh, Washington now, this is, to me, this is, as always, all these cases are sad, but to me, the circumstances of this case are very, are very sad. So, apparently, Mr. Washington suffered from seizures. It, 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 it impacted his memory, and in the summer prior to his disappearance, he had um, two, two seizures the day that he disappeared. He needs uh, medication to treat these seizures, which he does not have with him at the time when he disappeared. Uh, he had black hair, brown eyes. Uh, he has tattoos on both his upper arms, one of which reads legs, L-E-G-Z. And uh, he shaved his head at the time of his disappearance. So that's his basic information. He was last seen in Columbia, Missouri on October 15th, 2022. That morning, he had apparently had a minor seizure. He had spoken to his wife at about 9.30 a.m. And, and said he told her that he was going to drop their children off at a relative's house if he continued to feel sick or have seizures, another seizure. So he was obviously worried about um, the children. He wanted them to be able to be with somebody who could care for them just in case he had another, another seizure so they would be safe so it said that he did subsequently drop the kids off at the relative's house and around at 1 30 p.m he had another seizure and when he regained awareness it says he no longer recognized his stepson so i i've never had any experience with seizures or really known anybody that's been close to me that's had seizures but apparently if they're if they're bad enough it I'm assuming they could be fatal. I don't know. Anybody out there watching, please leave a comment and let me know. But definitely, um, I know it 
you get your when you come back conscience or whatever um you can be disoriented and um but it says he no longer recognized his steps then so following the second seizure um mr washington got up walked out of his residence at the columbia square apartments he was last seen walking near west middle school on clink scale clink scales i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right road and this picture on the left um i'm assuming it's from uh, like a security camera or a traffic camera or something of that sort um this is the last um photo of him on the day he disappeared after he left his residence so this is what he was wearing it was like a gray maybe gray long sleeve uh shirt t-shirt blue jeans and then the red um i think this they were nike um tennis shoes and after that he uh was never heard from again unfortunately so it says mr washington had moved to columbia in early october the year that he disappeared he did this in order to get a better education for his children um the youngest of his children was just two years old at that time he had previously spent most of his life in St. Louis, in the uh, St. Louis, Missouri area. And this, another so sad part of this case, in December of 2022, his seven-year-old daughter and four-year-old granddaughter were killed in a fire at the Columbia Square Apartments, which also displaced his family. So I think the Columbia Square Apartments was where he he uh, walked out of or where he was last seen but to, to me i mean this case just i want oh this this one got to me all of them get to me but this one got to me really bad and just the circumstances with the seizures and the wandering wandering away and then he previously had had lost a daughter or a daughter and a granddaughter in a fire and um so, in my opinion, or my thinking, since he had the, we have the information that he had the two seizures, and when he became aware again after the second seizure, he didn't recognize his stepson. He wandered out of the house. I would, like I said, just assuming i hate to use the word assuming but he could have just wandered off um i don't know anything about the terrain around there if there's any bodies of water or anything around that he could have possibly fallen into and, and drowned or just wandered off and got lost and uh unfortunately it's just never been found um but if you have any information about mr washington or uh his disappearance, you can contact the Columbia Police Department at 573-874-7652. All right, next we have, I'm going to see if I can pronounce this name without butchering it. Arely Geraldine Garcia Sanchez. And I'm just going to call her Arely. Um, she went missing on September 22nd, 2022. So just over a year from Salinas, California. She is classified also as endangered missing. She is an Hispanic female. She was 25 at the time of her disappearance. So she will be 26 um, as of 2023. She was five foot five, 130 to 168 pounds. She was last sworn seeing last seen wearing a black hooded sweatshirt and black leggings uh, she had brown hair brown eyes she has a dermal piercing on her chest i don't know what kind of piercing that is i've heard of pier some different piercings i've never heard of a dermal piercing but if anybody um knows what that is please uh, leave me a comment because i'd be interested to know and a uh, cleft in her chin uh, she wears contact lenses and she may use Excuse me, I may use the name Ari Garcia. So, Ari Lee was last seen in Salinas, California at around 6.34 a.m., so pretty early in the morning, 
or to me it would be early on uh, september 22nd of 2022 she had left her apartment on roosevelt street where she lived with her mother she was going uh she was going to her job at a Chevrolet car dealership. She normally left home for work at around 7.30 a.m. And it's not clear, it says, why she left early on this day. She also wasn't wearing the sort of clothes that she would have worn to work. She never arrived at work and she has never been heard from again. So to me right there, a couple of red flags. Um, she left basically an hour earlier than she usually does to go to work. and. She wasn't wearing these sort of, they say, the sort of clothes that she would have worn to work. So I'm assuming that it may not be in a uniform type clothes, but maybe, you know, dressier clothes, um, professional uh, clothes, casual, uh, business casual, whatever you want to call it. And the last place that her cell phone pinged was in the Big Sur area, which is about an hour's drive from Salinas. And that's on the right hand side. Um, I'm not familiar with California. I have a niece that lives in California, but I've never been there. So I'm, I'm assuming that on the right there is um, an outline or general area of what they consider the Big Star region. And her red Honda Accord was found there parked on the side of Highway 1 near the Little Sioux River. So that's another thing. Always red flaggy whenever they find somebody's vehicle or the last known location was near a body of water because we all know anybody that's followed true crime i say this in all my videos when it around the body of water anything could happen it's very hard to find vehicles much less a person if they have fallen into the water and drowned so just keep that in mind um, the car was locked. The keys were in the ignition and her cell phone and wallet were inside and there was no indications of foul play. So what are our thoughts on this? To me, like I said, the red flags left an hour for our, left an hour early for work, wasn't wearing her work clothes. Her cell phone pinged um, hour away um, in the Big Sur. Her car was found locked with the keys in it. Cell phone, she left cell phone and wallet inside and no indications of foul play. I don't know about the terrain, once again, or region in the poly she disappeared. I don't know if it's a mountainy area. But just the body of water, uh, Little Sioux River. And I'm assuming um, that police would have at least made a cursory search of the river. That would be my best guess is that she either left of her own accord, although I don't know why. I mean, she would leave her car parked on the side of the highway near a river. Or self-harm possibly or accidental death for some reason maybe but that wouldn't make sense either if, if the keys if the car vehicle was found locked with the keys inside cell phone and wallet inside if the car had broken down it looks like she would have taken her wallet and her phone with her or called somebody so this one has me confused so please let me know uh, if you guys have any ideas on this one uh, let, please let me know it says that um, Early was close to her family prior to her disappearance, and they can't think of any reason why she would have wanted to leave. And obviously, the circumstances of her disappearance are unclear and very mysterious. So if you have any information about this case, you can contact the Salinas Police Department at 831-775-4240. All right, next we have Johnny Jermaine Worthens, Worthens Jr. He went missing on September 20th, 2022 from Pahokee, Florida. 
once again classified endangered missing. He is a black male. He was 24 years old at the time he disappeared. Five foot nine, 170 pounds. He was last seen wearing a white t-shirt, blue, red, and gray pajama pants, and white sneakers. He had uh, black hair, brown eyes. He has tattoos on both hands and both arms. And his nicknames are Bo and Jay. So he was last seen in Pahokee. Once again, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Pahokee, Florida. He may have been with a friend near Curry Park, which is in West Palm Beach, prior to his disappearance. He has never been heard from again, and his mother reported him missing two days later. So not too long, um, just two days after it, we, he went missing or was last seen, his mother reported him missing. So in relation to this disappearance of Johnny, in March of 2023, two local men were charged with first-degree homicide in connection with the shooting of a 33-year-old man in November of 2022 in uh, Pahokee, Florida. Now, this is kind of confusing. I'm going to try to... It, it, it ties in to the missing, or possibly ties in to the missing person. So the, the defendants that were arrested for this crime were Larry Dunnan, Thomas Mervin, and Drake Hamilton. Now, all of these men were either friends or relatives of Johnny Worthens, the missing person we're discussing. Now, this crime happened after they confronted this alleged victim about rumors that whoever this victim was, they didn't give a name, after rumors that he, the victim, was involved in Johnny's disappearance. So apparently they, whoever this unnamed victim was, well, I, I guess word gets out on the street or however it happens or a tip comes in or they just hear something and thought that this victim may have had something to do with their friend or relative's disappearance. They unfortunately decided to take the law into their own hands and, um, and it said that Mervin, which is one of the three arrested, was accidentally shot during this crime as well. And he became paralyzed as a result. So I think they said it is unknown. So the name of the victim in the November 2022 crime was not made public. And authorities have not said whether they think he was, in fact, involved in um Johnny's disappearance. Uh, Johnny's mother said that he had never previously gone more than one day or so without contacting his family. His case is unsolved, obviously. So once again, uh, we have the the shooting of the uh, victim that three friends and or relatives of Mr. Worthen Possibly because they think he might have had something to do with Johnny's disappearance. Police say they're, they don't know. They're not sure. Um, in, in any regard, it, it is sad. Um, so if you have any information regarding Johnny's disappearance, you can contact the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office at 561-688-3400. All right. Next, we have Christine Noel Anderson. She went missing July 21st, 2022, from Sacramento, California. Once again, endangered missing, white female, 40 years old at the time she disappeared, 5'3, 120 pounds. She was last seen wearing a pink shirt and black leggings. Now, she does have bipo bipolar disorder. She may be confused or in need of medical attention as a result. And I find that a lot of these cases that I find, there's either some kind of uh, bipolar disorder, mental disorder, 
drug use. And I'm not saying that's the case in this, but just any number of cir circumstances that may not necessarily be foul play, um, but just may contribute to the to the disappearance. Um, she had blonde hair, blue eyes, and she was wearing glasses. She was last seen near Garden Highway in Sacramento on July 21st, 2021. She may be driving a rented navy blue 2022 Mazda CX-6 CX with California license plate. Um, and I believe it's, uh, that this is the actual picture. It looks like there's somebody in there because it says a photo of it is posted with this case summary. And I got this come all this information comes from Charlie Project and this was included. So I'm going to go on the assumption that maybe this is a traffic uh, camera footage picture. Not 100% not sure. So she had made plans to meet up with a friend near American River College on July 22nd. She never arrived and she has never been heard from again. Unfortunately, that's about all the details we have um, in this case. And evidently I cut off the phone number. But if you have any information, you can contact the uh, San Diego Police Department. Because apparently when I was copying and pasting, I could I didn't put the didn't get the whole number in there. I apologize. Okay, next we have Kendra Nicole Botello. She went missing on January 7th, 2022 from Enid, Oklahoma. Uh, she's a biracial, it says black, Hispanic, Native American female. She was 24 when she went missing. Uh, she'll be 26 today. Five foot seven to five foot eight, 115 to one, 130 pounds. Uh, once again, it says that uh, Kendra has mental health issues and substance abuse disorder, according to her family. She is an enrolled member of the Muscogee Creek Nation, which is a Native American her, her hair was cut very short in a buzz cut style at the time of her disappearance, but it says that she would often wear wigs of various colors and styles. So she could have any style wig, any color wig. Um, makes it a little bit hard for identification or sightings. So when she disappeared, she was staying at a residence in West Randolph, uh, but left at some point. Her mother last heard from her around midnight on July 7th, and she was reported missing by her family on July 12th. So about five days later, they reported her missing. She may have been sighted on July 20th when someone resembling her knocked on someone's door in Pawnee, Oklahoma. And I don't know how far Pawnee is from Enid. If anybody knows, because you, if you see the picture there where the Sari is, is where Enid is. If anybody knows, familiar with that area, knows how far Pawnee is from Enid, please leave me a comment. Uh, she knocked on this door, asked for a glass of water. The woman who answered the door reported the sighting to the police on July 21st after finding out that Miss Patello was a missing person. She, uh, she has never been heard from again. I think I copied and pasted wrong on that too. So she, after uh, July 5th, 22, 2022, she has never been heard from again. So, big red flag, obviously, in this one. To me, this one's not so mysterious, but this is just my opinion. At the time that she disappeared, she was with her boyfriend, Kobe Shepard. There was a pending DV case against him. She was the victim. The court case was dismissed after Miss Patello disappeared because she was not available to testify against Shepard in court. So, you can see where I'm going with this. 
Uh, authorities haven't said whether Shepard, the boyfriend, is a person of interest in her case or not. Anybody who's watched any of my videos knows what I'm going to say. To me, in my opinion, but I'm not an expert, number one suspect right there, Colby Shepard, the boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, whatever, that they were going to court. And she just happens to disappear the day before, a couple of days before she was supposed to testify against him against the DV case. And she disappears. Like I said, that is just my opinion. Feel free to leave your opinion or your thoughts in the comments and let me know what you think. It is unusual for Ms. Patello to be out of contact with her family or social media for several days in a row and her disappearance remains unsolved. So if you have any information, you can contact the Enid Police Department at 580-242-7000. massage to work maybe that was the last one well i got through those fast apparently that was the last one all right guys so that was our five our missing person monday five cases cold cases which they weren't usually i do really really cold cases like 70s 80s 90s i believe all of these were from one to two years old Still, still important, still cold cases. So I, I encourage you, I implore you, please um, like, comment, share. Uh, the more likes, comments, shares, the more it gets pushed out to uh, YouTube, pushes it out to more people. And that's the most important part of this is to get this information about these missing persons and their stories out to as many people as possible. So with that said, until next time, th oh, thank you for watching. Um, if you like what I do here at Southern Gaucho Crime, please consider subscribing. I upload uh, Missing Person Monday. Sometimes I do, if I have anything current true crime, I'll do a Wednesday video. Fridays I have a uh, case of the week. About every other Sunday, I do a true crime Sunday live stream. So I encourage you, um, like I said, if this, if you found this video interesting, informative, please subscribe, hit the notification bell to all. So you'll be notified if I upload any new videos or schedule a live stream. So until next time and take care of yourselves, be careful out there and take care of each other. Bye bye.